All right, all right, all right. That's right, that's right. I am back. Lockout man, always coming back at you guys with some good, with the good, good. You know what I'm saying? That good, good. Well, in today's podcast interview, I have two people. Yeah, two people that decided to come up in the spot and they're here to, to talk about, you know, freight brokers and the stuff that's going on in the world and all that good stuff. And the first gentleman I'm about to I'm about to introduce to you guys is uh you know, it's a good friend. You know, we have our differences, you know what I'm saying? But that's all all up under the water. But he's a good guy and he 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 got something to say. You know what I'm saying? The second guy that's on there is his partner. He was out in DC. You know what I'm saying? He was up in DC. So we're gonna find out what all went down in DC to see if uh you know, see if uh anything productive came out of the DC protest, maybe? I don't know. But I wanna bring to the show. My first up is Ron Stinson from Sovereign Roads. And the other person I want to bring to the show is my man Chivo. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Because when I, I beat people's names up all the time. I beat them up all the time. It's like an Ali fight. I I I, I come shake bacon. I, I have I instead of your name, I'll, I'll be calling you a totally different person. You'd be like, yo, who the hell? <laughs> uh, what's going on, gentlemen? What's going on? Uh, everything is everything. Proper, proper. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, Ryan, man, why don't you go ahead and uh, let the people know where you from and, uh, you know, give a little bit of background about yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, my family, my loved ones, believe it or not, they call me Toe. They call me Toe Jam. Toe Jam, that icky icky from the rotten apple. Mm -hmm. But uh, currently residing in the big city of Columbus, Ohio, home of the world famous Ohio, the Ohio State Buckeyes. There you go. There you go. That's what's uh, up. Yeah, yeah. My oh. homeboy Chivo is... Used to be a uh, used to cheer for him when uh, he was younger. <laughs> he say he say used to he say he used to cheer for him for him when he was younger. <laughs> yeah, Ron Stinson. Yeah, Ron Stinson from the from the Ohio. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah we got something in common. I'm from the two one six, and he's from the six one four. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, Chivo, Chivo, yeah. what's going on, sir? Introduce yourself and let them yeah. know where you uh, where you come from. All right, I'm Chivo. I'm actually from the original three one three in Detroit. I've uh, been driving nine years. Uh, independent owner operator. Have my own authority. The last two. Also uh, worked as a lease op for four years, so I got six solid years as a owner operator. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so Ryan, man, we we was in the comedy. We we just gonna jump right into it because you know we we was in a, you know we was in a deep conversation, and I you know what you what you was spitting was was some straight facts, some straight truths, man. Um, go ahead and uh you know remind the people what uh what what's what's on your mind how you feel about what's what's going on out here today man how how that's hurting your heart well, right now well i work in transportation i drive trucks i've been in this game for 28 years and trucking if you don't know is in a state of emergency trucking is in trouble somebody mm -hmm. grabbed the red phone called a Call the president, get the nuclear codes. We in trouble. The problem is we fail to understand and realize that we give away our power. Mm -hmm. There's 3.5 million of us out here. It wouldn't even take all of us. It would just take 50,000 drivers to say we've had enough. If that were to happen, we could get the concessions. We wouldn't have to go run talking to the president. We wouldn't have to go asking our representative for permission to do what 
they should already be doing. Mm -hmm. Our representatives and our presidents have already cast a die in the sand. They've been sold, they sold to these large corporations. So we can't go and ask President Trump, who answers to Walmart, to fix Walmart as it pertains to transportation, as it pertains to the drivers when we show up and bump their docks. He's taking campaign funds. He's, take, he's doing sweetheart deals behind the scenes. He's enriching himself off the backs of Walmart and providing favors for Walmart. So we can't ask Trump to do us a favor. Mm -hmm. We have to do it ourselves. Now, it can't just be that. So I'm not dissing the movement to D.C. because that's part, that's one of the components of the revolution. Okay, okay. But that's only one of the parts. It's, it takes several different components. If we want, if we're serious about wanting these components, we have to take over the training in the schools. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the drivers. Mm -hmm. We have to take over the legislation and, and, and the DOT. There should be a, a review board, a citizens or a driver review board for the DOT. We can't just get rid of the DOT. We need the DOT because there are some people out here Running bogus, running okay. tired, running sleepy, right, right. running with uh, uh, faulty equipment. But we should have a driver review board that checks is a check system, a balance system to the DOT. Okay, okay. Um, we can't have these boys out here writing us up because they they in a bad mood, writing up brand new trucks because they in a bad mood. And some of them, have to some of them do to, that, right? Some, some, some of the DOT, they do it. They do that, right? They do it today. They do it today. There ain't nothing wrong with um, them trucks, and they just, you know, feel like they just feel like they want to abuse their power or something like that. Most people, and and, and you're gonna people will tell you, you know, when I say what I'm finna say, go ahead. Go I ahead. can. There's gonna be a collective. Aha, uh -huh. going on with your listeners and everyone here. Okay. I have been pulled over, and the DOT officer told me he had four more reports to do before he could go home, or inspections to do mm. before he could go home. Okay. I pulled you aside because you look like, you know, your your stuff. You know, you got a brand new truck, brand new trailer, so this would be an easy one. Okay. I just need to get these four knocked out so I can go home. Okay. I'm sure you've heard that. I'm sure Chivo's heard that. And I'm sure your listening audience has experienced that or uh, uh, heard that as well. well this you... shouldn't be a quota system. This should be about safety. Okay, okay. Now, you, you know, now that you mentioned that, you know, it kind of gave me to thinking about how how – you know, regular cops just, you know, pull people over and just give them a ticket because of their quotas. I didn't realize that it was a quota, any any type of quota in, in trucking, man, in DOT. I, I ain't know that. I, would, I wouldn't even call it a quota. I would call it a commission-based uh, 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 infraction. They're giving out these infractions because it pays. Not only the money that you're paying in the ticket or the infraction, but you're, they're proving to the federal government, look, we have the state of, I'll just say Missouri. Mm -hmm. The state of Missouri has these issues. We have all these bad or, or, or non-compliant trucks coming through our state. We need more money. We need more resources mm -hmm. to be able to tackle the problem. So then they prove it by how many tickets they've been writing, and they give it to the feds, and the feds say, okay, You've made your case. Here's, you know, some X amount of millions of dollars. So you can have portable scales. You can have uh, the uh, uh, what's the uh, the machine that you drive through that checks the content of your uh, trailer. It's a gamma ray. You here's okay. money for a gamma ray machine. Uh, you know, maybe the DOT wasn't armed, and you know, here's some funding to make sure that all your DOT because now truck drivers are dangerous. You, if you know, on Ohio, the DOT officers don't carry weapons. Mm -hmm. But at, at some point they will. And after this little, the stuff that we got on going on with the... With, uh, with the protesters. The and protesters, everything. et cetera. I'm sure shortly 
thereafter, uh, the Ohio DOT will be armed. Okay, okay. Chivo, man, Chivo, you, uh, to my understanding, you, you, you went out to D.C. Uh, what, what, what you guys going to D.C., what, what, what you guys expected to get out of that meeting with, uh, with the president? Uh, okay, so we went to D.C. Um, I was paying attention to some of the chatter on Facebook uh, saying that the president did acknowledge that they were there on that Friday, which was May 1st. And May Day, that, May Day. You know, it, was a, it was a good sign, right? So mm -hmm. uh, the next day, I actually jumped on the flight to go up there because I couldn't figure out exactly how many trucks. I couldn't get any answers. There's a lot of miscommunication, and I'm, I hate miscommunication. Right. So I actually grabbed the flight up there, flew up there Saturday, uh, got a hotel room for three nights, uh, went out there Sunday morning, got to meet the main players at the time, uh, a lady named Janet, a guy named Rick, a um, couple other guys that showed up, and uh, one of the guys, um, Frank Broker Live, that guy showed up. Okay. So we all had, had a conversation about you know, what was the plan and – you know, we never knew the timeline when the president was going to talk, if he would or wouldn't. Uh, everything was pretty much still shut down due to COVID-19 there. So it was mm -hmm. really, really limited. Mm -hmm. So at at first, nobody, they did not have a permit to be there at mm. all. And okay. so there was no bathrooms. But because they were peaceful, the Secret Service allowed them to stay. Okay. So because everybody was peaceful, the Secret Service and the Capitol Police all gave everybody hats off to them. Hey, thanks for being here. Okay. You guys are doing a great job, this and that. So okay. it was an extremely positive experience uh, that way. And because everybody, you know, I want to make sure that trucking is giving a really, really good image because there is so much crap that we deal with that people don't see. And there's not enough regulation to get the ones out of here, making it bad for the rest of us. I got so you. I wanted to make sure we were going there, giving a good image. So I made sure and look that maybe people weren't throwing trash on the ground, cigarette butts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be, you know, using the bathroom. Nobody did that. None of them. Okay. And so I got to, I got to talk with all the different groups. Uh, remember everybody's united, but you had your Ukrainians there, you okay. had the Indians there, you okay. had uh, Cubans. You had Dominicans, all walks of life uh, there. Puerto Ricans. So it's it a bunch of everybody coming together because we're all fighting for our cause because we're all trucking family. Mm -hmm. So we have things that need to be addressed. A lot of it uh, was sad to hear these guys' stories where those brokers were getting paid extra money uh, to send these guys to certain areas, but they were only paying them $1.25 a mile. And mm -hmm. then if they're sitting there for hours and hours and hours, like the toilet paper was backed up, they weren't paying them detention. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the brokers were cut, cutting a lot of people out. Not all brokers are bad, but th there's just enough of them. So let me let me ask you this uh, about uh, about that. Do you uh, being being the owner operator and I, you know, like I said, I I'm a, I'm a company driver, man. So I, you know, I, I came to I, I came phantom to understand what you guys really go through with uh, dealing with the with the brokers trying to get some trying to get the the rate that you guys want. I always look at it from both sides of the fence. You know what I'm saying? I, I always thought that, you know, the brokers was in it to make money as well as the drivers are in it to make money. I, I you know, if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was thinking that it was the drivers, you know, that pretty much made the strain as well because you guys bid on the freight and y'all undercut each other. You know, let's say, for example, let's say a thousand dollars. Right. And you know, it's, it's up for a thousand dollars. You guys, you, you, you claim it, you say, yo, I get it. I'll do this for a thousand dollars. But then two seconds later, somebody comes in and say, yo, I can do it for eight. You know what I'm saying? So I was thinking, yeah, I was like, I, well, is I, that really the, the broker's fault or is it the trucker's fault too? Yeah. Um, uh, well, go ahead and jump in there and answer that. But let me just say this. You said, tell me if I'm right or wrong. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Chivo. The, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the rate you get undercut, but the, <laughs> the, 
The brokers need to pay a viable wage, and here's why. When you, when you start cutting corners like that, people are cutting corners on maintenance on the trucks. Now you're creating public safety hazards for everybody, not only the drivers. So, for example, for me, you know, we're, we're paying insurance. We're paying super high insurance because, like, people are self-insured, like uh, Snyder, uh, Prime, all these other companies. Right. Why should they be right. self-insured? They cause more of the accidents. Right. You know, screw that. That They should pay just like us. Then you stop the monopoly of these companies coming in here utter bidding because they're paying the drivers. They don't pay them the detention. And then on top of that, yeah, the company gets the detention, but they're not paying the drivers. See, oh, there's no detention in that. Not yeah, everybody yeah. happens, but it does if happen. I could, if I could just add this little caveat to that, mm -hmm. what are you bidding on? Nobody knows how much money is in the load. Or, okay. excuse me, the driver. The drivers that call in on these loads, they don't know how much money is in the load. They ask you, what would you do it for? Mm -hmm. Well, half of these guys that jump into this game don't know they cost per mile. And that's not a diss, but that's essential. No, that's facts. That's facts. You're right. You got new drivers that's coming in that, you know, that's that's coming in the owner operations, leasing. They, they, they don't know they cost per mile. You know, some of them some of them really coming off of a company side, making 60, 50, 60 cent a mile. You know what I'm saying? Thinking that a dollar, you know, 90 cent or a dollar a mile is, is money. But you guys says it isn't right. It's absolutely. But if we knew how much money was in the load and let me give you a little synopsis. Mm -hmm. There's a sales agent that talks directly to the, the customer who needs their stuff shipped. Exactly. That sales agent, and I'm talking large broken houses. I'm not talking about the mom and pop that dispatch out of their bedroom okay. and they house shoes and slippers. Mm. Mm. House shoes and slippers. No, no shots fired. No, no shots fired. Um, no, no, no shots fired. Toe jam. No shots fired right there. None. No, ain't no, no house coat. I'm sorry. I, said, I meant to say house coat and slippers. No, no shots fired. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, that's a nice hustle if you can get it, man. I ain't mad at them. Okay. But they talk, let's say, let's take Walmart, for example. Mm -hmm. The sales agent talks to Walmart. They have a screen in their computer where they can say, okay, I got this load for, let's say, just for easy math, I got this load for $10. When they get all that information in there, the broken house puts parameters on the software. So by the time the broker sees it, who Chivo would talk to, that low says six dollars. Hmm. Okay. Now the sales agent got the load for ten. The broker can only see six. Okay. So when the broker is negotiating with Chivo, he's negotiating off of his commission minus uh, the six dollars minus his commission. So by the time it gets to Chivo, he's only negotiating with four or five dollars. Mm. Now we're talking about a ten dollar load. They already holding fifty percent of the load, and they don't have. And Chivo got more than seventy percent invested in that load. Okay. When you're talking about maintenance, fuel, insurance, etc., these people got pens. They got a bond. You can be a broker for five thousand dollars per year. Why are they getting? Why is it they're not full transparency? And that's what I'm saying. I, and when I say you're wrong, I'm saying that you're asking the wrong questions. Yeah, that's all part of it. But why are we still playing the game when they brought their own loaded dice? Why are we playing craps with them? And they bring in their own loaded dice. Mm. Anybody, any crap players? Y'all know what loaded dice are. Uh, exactly. Uh, that, uh, that's a solid uh, example, though. It is. Yeah. Exactly. So we don't need to play the game the same way that they playing it. We need to. We haul the free. We the we the talent. You know, as my boy Boogie Boy shouts out to Boogie Boy. We the talent. Why are we playing by their game? They don't haul no free. Exactly. Yeah, they they don't have any overhead in it. You know, my overhead for my business is about six thousand dollars a month, and then you add fuel on top of that. You know, a thousand bucks a week. So now we're at ten grand. So 
you know, they, they don't have those expenses. They don't have the breakdowns. What is their phone going to break down? Is their computer going to break down? I'm sorry, just use your tablet or just use your. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but, so yeah, how do you? It's crazy. So how do you guys? And I know you guys said that you know we we need to come together as one, which it's it's always hard to do when when you try to organize something, but but you 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 got drivers out there that's that are running the freight for next to nothing what what do you say to them how do you get them how do you get them on board my heart goes out to them because they got a mortgage and again they got to do something I don't think the ones moving dollar mile freight even have a mortgage. Some of them, I can't tell the difference if they're homeless or a truck driver. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just by the way the truck looks. Uh, Chivo, no shots fired, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but ultimately, if they keep running that freight and they run it long enough, they're going to weed themselves out. So I ain't got – only thing I can say is God bless you. You know, you ain't going to be here much longer. Okay. You can't afford to keep running that freight. When a wider says that it costs at least a dollar eighty a mile. At least. At the okay. very minimum. And that's just dry van freight. Okay. So what do you say what do you say to people? What what do you say to people? Yo, instead of using brokers, y'all y'all need to just find your own y'all your own contracts, y'all your own shippers, your own y'all own people that y'all deal with. What, what do you say to people that say that? Well, you talking to one of them, Chivo. Okay. What do, you, yep. what do I say to you? I've actually uh, gotten my truck two weeks ago and uh, for two weeks hit all these places in Alabama and I got such good reviews with some of these uh, people direct that I decided to put a contract on a house. So I will be moving there, and, like, one of them's a wood company. You know, they're paying over 2 bucks a mile. Yeah, it's heavy stuff, but it gets me moving, and that's just one of the, you know, pieces of the puzzle. I had another customer offer me 220 to 270 a mile, you know. So there's a lot of freight out there, and I'm willing to take that chance because Alabama's a heavy, heavy uh, flatbed state anyway. Okay. Texas, Texas is flatbed, but only if you're hauling to the oil fields. He ain't hauling nothing back. Screw that. It ain't working out for me. I got you. And the boys would be happy, happy to pay that because they're cutting out the broker. So they still winning. They both sides win. Okay. So yeah. back in DC, man, you say you met some of the some of the players. Uh what what's your what's your opinion on them? Uh Rick. Uh what was the young lady named? Je- I don't want to say. Go ahead. Janet say Sanchez. Uh, Janet Sanchez. Rick, Rick, Rick. Yeah, Janet Sanchez. She was a great uh, mediator for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, she talked to all the groups and organized things really well. Uh, Rick actually just opened the door for the meeting, and then everybody else came together in the meeting. Um, we did put together some things that they get passed over, but you know that's on them. Uh, I wanted to contribute not as a leader but as s- someone to give positive information mm-hmm. and uh i'll actually email you the uh letter that we had typed up if they would have presented this letter because it covered all the bases for example now they're saying that um well they didn't find evidence they didn't find evidence i have personally had evidence of a broker playing games you know the bro- broker had an agreement of 2200 bucks he sends me the rate con and says, well, it's only 60% of it. And then uh, there was all these different percentages because if I answered my phone, if I answered my email, if I answered – and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you track me one way or the other. We're not going to do all three. So – and then, you know, they want to deduct and just stupid stuff. So you it's know, like I, I didn't agree to that, you know. I I, I do – I you know, of course I'm a company driver, but I, I do drive broker freight, and I – I feel you on that, man. They 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 send you all these macro points and 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 call you and and just bug the shit out of you, man. I mean, I just wanted to just say, bro, leave me the hell alone. Don't you know I'm driving? Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's what I that's what I told him. He called me. He says, uh, I'm just trying to make sure. I said, well, I sent the macro point arrived. Why are you calling me? Right. He goes, well, you didn't answer the phone. I said, I said that's my company policy. 
you know, I don't answer the phone when I'm driving. <laughs> My man said that's my company policy. I don't answer, the, especially if I see you calling. I'm I'm not answering while while I'm driving. Dad, there you go, bro. They, they got all their rules. So, but, uh, uh, anyway, uh, it, it was a good meeting. But you know, now they're saying that oh, there wasn't no evidence. There is evidence. But on top of that, now they're now they're coming back and saying, well, drivers need relief. The the letter I covered covered everything, all those angles, safety, mm-hmm. uh, relief. I mean, all that stuff. So you know what? You snooze, you lose on that one. You lost your platform, in my opinion. But we'll see what they do in uh, D.C. Uh, during um, October fourth. They're going to go back. So did you? So did you guys actually meet with the president? Uh, no, I was only there a few days. Um, on Sunday, the president had a town hall meeting, and he had his um, motorcade come by, and everybody was out there, you know, with our stuff. And then when he came back, he actually rolled down the window in one of the limos and looked out at us. So uh, he heard all the cheers. Nobody gave him the finger, nothing like that. Everybody was respectful. <laughs> and uh, he sent his secret service out to bring us all hats. So we got hats, and it's a nice gesture. At least he, you know, he's acknowledging us. Hey, we're there. We're doing this, and we're all peaceful. So uh, they eventually got the time to set up the meeting. I already came back and immediately started uh, looking for uh, direct contacts. But I felt good that everybody was doing a, a thorough job. Uh, everybody participated in something there, mm-hmm. and uh, they got the meeting on um, May twentieth and got to sit down with the FMCSA and all that not that lady chow but you know another part of it was why did we have all these people in government running the fmcsa when none of them know how to run run a truck you wouldn't have a navy fleet you wouldn't have a truck run a navy fleet why do you have ling chow running trucking i'm sorry you don't know trucking exactly so it's you got to have more people that know the gridiron of trucking the breakdowns all the stuff, not the guys that just get out of the truck and put their slippers and tracksuits on and go inside and, and and eat soup out of the out of the container. You know that's 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 how I, that's how I feel about some of these uh, some of these recruiters and some of these dispatchers, man. Because you know these recruiters and dispatchers, they 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 come in and they they absolutely know nothing about the industry, you know. As, uh, I'm just doing my job, man. Yeah, just yeah. Doing my job. Exactly. That's that's some how the that's how they too. are. That's how they are. And some of the brokers too. Oh, you yeah. got five coils. Well, you want me to do it for a two coil price? You need to be charging extra for if it's five coils. Five coils takes about two hours to chain chain down. That's some serious work, man. All right. So not cha- to mention absolutely. how dirty it is. So, uh, cha- how did it- Chave, Chave, right? Chave. Chivo. Tivo. God damn it, man. See? Let me let me get myself a buzzer. Hold on. Whoops, wrong button. There you go. <laughs> TiVo, man. So I, I so you how long you been in the game total, man, as as a flatbed? You you flatbedding, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I started as a company driver uh, for May Trucking. Uh, oh, somebody I did that somebody for static just over a year. Some somebody static. Sorry, I'm sitting still. Okay, Dick. I thought that was in your end. There you go. All right. Okay. Oh, it's so still there. I started with a major, major uh, I don't know, maybe <laughs> a headset. Uh, started mate trucking, did that for about a year, just over a year. Uh, moved on to um, uh, Furniture Row. Mm-hmm. Did that for two years, and then I bounced over to the uh, you, you hear that, Toe Jam? Yeah, I hear it. It's real bad. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Are, are you on the headset? Uh, t- t- yeah, I'm on a headset. Uh, on a headset. try try taking try taking me off the headset and try talking through the phone. Let, let, let me let me try a different headset. It was harder to try to hear through. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Ooh. Ooh, there you go. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> That blue parrot says that blue parrot says he's talking two truths, man. <laughs> that blue parrot is not they trying. Said the, yeah, that blue parrot must have said the wrong thing. The NSA <laughs> just tapped into the line. <laughs> 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 
He's talking about them foreigners in the track suits and the slip-ons. <laughs> and they say, oh, we better listen to this call. All right, how about this one? Is this one better? Perfect. There perfect. you go. There you go. Okay. Yeah, we good. Sorry. We good. All right, so All you. Right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Refresh my memory, man. I had a oh. TiVo, TiVo moment. <laughs> you say you had a TiVo moment. No, you was talking about, uh, uh, right. you know, how long you've been in the game. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I bounced. Okay, I bounced over the flatbed because I got tired of sitting at these uh, grocery warehouses, taking two, three hours, and then paying somebody to lump the freaking load, and then they can't count. So exactly. I'm like, I'm done with all that, man. Especially Walmart. Walmart was a huge, yeah. huge no, problem for it's, me. It's still a problem. It's still a problem. Problem from you, yeah. Toe Jam. It's still a still a problem for oh, you. Horrible. Yeah, it's still a problem. Only, only, only. The only thing yeah. that they did right is get rid of the lumper fees. Well, you know, you shouldn't have to pay anybody to load the product. You ordered it, you pay for it. You know, and unless you're going to unload it right then and subject account, that's on you because that, that seal t- that you verify, it was sealed when I brought it in. So that means whatever's in there is in there. Exactly. Sorry, I'm not responsible for anything else. Exactly. So the the, the the system's broken in that respect. And and who the heck pays lumpers for man? The lumpers are con artists for real. Uh, but um, anyway, so I decided to get in a flatbed game. So the flatbed game is kind of a Monday through Friday job and weekends off. And during that, you know, you're not waiting. You know, you're getting up. The only thing that sucks is sometimes you find the places that close early before 2 p.m. That's BS, and they need to communicate that so you can plan better to, to get there. But anyway, Monday through Friday, you know, you grab a little Friday, run for the weekend if you want, or take the weekend off. Okay. So it works for me. Uh, and, and I decided to get my own truck because the company I was with, I used to go out for two months at a time and try to take a week off. They wouldn't give me uh, six days off during my birthday. My 40th birthday, I wanted six days off. I was going to go down to Costa Rica. I had buddies all waiting. They only want to give me four days. Well, it takes a day down to get down there a day back. How is that effective? You know what I mean? Right. It's stupid. So I said, okay, we won't play that game. I'll get my own truck. So for, for whatever, six months later, I get my own truck, and uh, I run it. And I think I ran for a good year, and then uh, then I took like a whole month and a half off and went to the Philippines. Okay, that's <laughs> like what's that. up, man. Oh, that's God. that. That's that yeah. money life. That that's what's up, man. I gotta give it to you for that, man. Shit, that boy taking. See, that's what's up for trucking. That trucking gives you that oh, yeah. that opportunity, man. This man taking vacations. You know what I'm saying. But uh, owning your own truck, tell you know, route me through to uh, to to getting your own truck. Are, are you is the truck yours now, or are are you paying for it? Or uh, yeah, I I got my truck through Lone Mountain. Uh, my credit wasn't that great; it was like six fifty back then or something. But Lone Mountain was kind of easy. I think I put like between eight and twelve thousand dollars down, which is a company driver. I did really well with that company initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I seen I seen the numbers. I broke down the numbers. I'd pay attention to exactly what it was. You know, back then I was making twenty seven or twenty eight percent. But I said, well, what would my rate be if I'm making eighty seven percent? So you know, so I did the numbers and the math was there. So I said, okay, let me, you know, go ahead and do this. So uh, it broke down to you know the I can't remember eight eight or twelve thousand down, and then twenty six seventy five a month for 60 months mm-hmm. so i got 10 months left my truck will be paid off and uh man that's that's a huge bonus to, to me i mean that's that's almost three thousand a month more so in you, my pocket so you decided to go to you decided to go to long mountain i you know i hear everybody likes uh likes to go to long mountain so you decided to go there yeah, instead well, of instead of leasing from a company well, you got to have a business plan. If you don't have a business plan, you, you probably don't even need to be thinking about becoming an owner operator. Gotcha. So you got to have a good business plan together. It's not about your credit with Lone Mountain. It is all about your plan, your execution, how you know who you're working for. Uh, I'm sure you know being who I was with at that time had a lot to do with it. Uh, we were a solid company, and there was a lot of people that also got trucks through them. Also. Okay. Um, you know, they dummy down the trucks a little bit, 
compared to what you would buy. Like, I don't have any rear speakers in the back of a sleeper, but who cares? I'm not here for popularity. I'm here for results. Exactly, exactly. Toe Jam, man. Toe Jam. 20, 20 years in the game, man. 20 years. 28. 28. This October make 28 years. 28 years in the game. 28 years in the game, man. When, when you started back in the day, what was rates like back in the day for you, man? Because they say, they say, you know, you old schoolers, which you are old schooler now, you old schoolers, you know, seen more money back in the day than y'all see right now. Well, I can tell you in the late 90s, I was hauling containers uh, out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And a round trip, uh, Columbus, Tip City, Ohio, to Chicago, back to Tip City, back to Chicago. That would be a round trip. That was a thousand dollar run, mm. so we was making over two dollars a mile in the late nineties. Mm. So, so Hold on. I... maybe, 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 maybe you didn't hear me. <laughs> so back in the late nineties, I, I heard you. I heard you. Okay, I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's so. Let so me ask. That's that's the that's my point. In the late nineties, we was making over two dollars a mile. With containers, you know, we weren't hauling no expensive freight. We was hauling shit off the train. Mm -hmm. And here we are, fast forward, damn near 30 years, and we're making the same, if not less, per mile. Now, the freight rate has went up and down, but inflation consistently goes up. Exactly. You can't buy the same Happy Meal with the money in the 90s. Or you're going to need more money today to buy that same Happy Meal that cost you or whatever it cost you in the late 90s. So back in the 90s, a hamburger was like 10 cents. Now the hamburger is like $5. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Yeah. That's... But you're still dealing with the same amount of money at the end of the week. At the end of the week. Yes, sir. All right. So you you you, you own your own truck as well, Toe Jam? You 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 on your own truck? I do. I have I have equipment. Uh, I I got car hauler equipment, but as it stands right now, I'm sitting in a company truck. Oh, okay, um, okay. Car cars just ain't paying right now. Um, is that because of the because of the pan? Is that because of the pandemic, or is just overall? Uh, overall, I think what happened initially was uh, the big outfit out of uh, Romulus, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um pretty much became the big outfit. They became the J.B. Hunt. And, you know, you ultimately had to go to them for everything cars. And then you have one um, uh, cardboard where you can, you know, get cars or people post cards uh, on the board. It's called, the um, uh, name is going to escape me right now. But it's kind of like the debt of car hauling. And the rates are became horrible when the company uh what's the name of the company in Detroit the big car hauler company uh not a Mavis no not Mavis they bought Mavis uh, but anyhow they're the, they're the JB Hunt oh uh, United 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 Road. Thank United you. Thank you. Oh, Thank yeah. you. United Road they start making moves they was buying companies they was get securing contracts and so they pretty much had secured the market and the rate for car hauling went down. Mm. Just like in this game and, and just general freight, you know, when you got JB Hunt Snyder and they're buying up all the contracts, they're doing contracts for basically nothing because they're the big outfits. They could afford to do that. Um, it draws the freight rate down. So y'all feel that. So y'all, so y'all do feel, you know, as owner operators, uh, y'all do feel that the that the the majors the the major carriers is pretty much fucking the game up. Yeah, because they're not for paying us, the insurance. Not for them. We're paying. Well, not for, no, well not them. not for That's them. I'm talking about for you guys. Right? Not not for them. Yeah, they, yeah it's, it's messing yeah. it up more for you guys. No, yeah. Because they're self insured, they can afford to take cheaper freight, so they can undercut people. Because of that, they shouldn't be doing that. If you could cut them all out, make them pay just the same, they would be in the same boat as us. We can't afford to pay, move freight for less. 
but they can because they're self-insured. Even though the nuclear verdicts do cost them money, but then they just end up going out of business or changing names, and that's why what uh, Swift is now Knight. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. C- Celadon is somebody. Right Celadon is somebody else now. Don't don't all these all these companies own subsidiaries of each other. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 crazy how yeah. many. How, how many a, trucking companies own the trucking company? You know what I'm saying? That's 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 crazy, yeah. man. So, but we gave okay. that power to them. We gave that control away to the majors. When the drivers had control, you know, we we didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. Apparently, we didn't appreciate it mm-hmm. because we seen it coming. When we seen old man Hunt die and his kids take over the company, mm-hmm. and they started making moves in the industry, um, and, you know, when they start putting themselves on Wall Street and getting publicly traded, they cast the die. They told us, they pretty much showed us what they was going to do and we didn't pay attention. Mm. You know, it's the same thing with, it's similar, and I, well, maybe I'm going way out there, but no, it's take similar your time, to, man. Take your time. It, it's similar to what's going on now. Mm-hmm. We have a group of people in society today that think, why are you protesting like this? Why mm-hmm. are you knocking down liquor stores mm-hmm. and stealing and looting? And, well, when we was kneeling, you didn't listen. When these people was, you know, the Tamir Rices, when the Sandra Bland, when we told you this was going on, you didn't listen. But now these road cops and these uh, these armies, they're not even cops anymore. They're armies. Now they're in the suburbs. Now you want to do something about it. Mm. But when it was just affecting the black neighborhoods and the liquor, you know, the 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 um, the Bronzevilles, if you will, mm-hmm. you know, oh well, you had to have been a resistant arrest. He wouldn't have got killed if he wasn't resisting. Mm. But no, now they got tanks rolling up and down suburbia. Well, you know what? I, I'm seeing the video. I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of glad you brought that up. Because I, I I wanted to get both of y'all opinions on uh, on the state of the world right now. I mean, you know, my my opinion, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 my opinion, and unfortunately, some people don't agree with my opinion, and that's that's all well and fine. I mean, you know, we all got it. You know, it's like a holes. We all got one. You know, my my thing is this: I I went downtown after af, after the destruction that they did to my city. And it was hurtful. It really was. I mean, what what they did down there really didn't have nothing to do with the narrative. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't for wasn't for George Floyd. It was for themselves. You know what I'm saying? And it 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 hurt me that this is the place where we had to come to shop. This is the place where we had to come to congregate. Now uh, now we got we we can't even get into the city, you know what I'm saying? They got tanks, they got they got troopers, they got police officers blocking off every exit, getting into the city because of because of what, you know, some some bonehead people. And I I and I I get what 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 Ryan said, Toe Jam said, you know, y'all y'all didn't listen while we was kneeling and praying and 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 doing the hums. But now y'all listening now because some unfortunate Me Too people out there, you know, uh, breaking into shit, you know, messing with the economy. Now, I I don't I don't feel that. But what's what's you guys take that's that's going on today, man? I mean, wow. The George Floyd situation. I'm sorry, Chico. Um, I think we are asking the wrong questions. George Floyd was the metaphorical runny nose. Okay, okay. No, That runny nose <laughs> is a symptom of a larger problem. You got a cold, you got a fever, you got pneumonia. You're not going to fix it by putting a tissue up to your nose and wiping the snot off your nose. You got to address what is causing that runny nose. So let me make that make sense. George Floyd is a unfortunate situation. 
Yes, it is. Uh, Breonna Taylor is an unfortunate situation. Yes, it is. Ahmaud but Aubrey. those people are not Ahmaud Arbery and all of them. Mm -hmm. But we're not, these people are not in this, well, hold on. First of all, let's keep in mind that there are agent provocateurs infiltrating these protests. They are people, either they're police or there's some other organization that don't want to see this successful. The other, or uh, and to finish my thought, mm -hmm. these people are not just in the streets because of police brutality. These people are in the streets because America isn't working for Americans, and they're mad as hell. All right, all right, all right. That's it. We need a reboot. We need a reset. We need America to work for Americans. We don't. We got to stop allowing America to only work for the large corporations or the people that can afford to put a lobbyist in D.C. Stop defunding the schools. Why is it that the police department is a third of the city's budgets? Mm. And they defund the schools. They defund the public hospitals. They defund the libraries. When it comes to anything else, they ain't got the money for it. But they always got money for incarceration, mm -hmm. the judicial system, and the police department. Mm. That's a problem. That's what's up. That's what's up. Chief, what's, what, 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 what you got to say uh, on what, what, how you feel about what's going on out here, bro? Well, uh, if you're going to loot and stuff, um, I got no respect for you. I don't care what the situation is. Exactly. You know, there's a, there's other ways to do, to handle it and, and act like fools and animals and all that. And and the problem is, you know, if this is such a a, a black problem, why are they allowing Antifa to spray paint BLM on buildings? Right. They need to start whipping their ass. Right. Or what stop, about stop make stop making those people look bad? Right. Because all, you know, all, all those people do have a good meaning and do have a good heart of what's going on. But them coming to destroy it and, and wearing all the masks and, and all that stuff and making it look like they did it? Come on, man. I'm pissed off about that. I'm surprised. Man, I'm telling you what. I'm locked and loaded in this. Please jump on my truck. This could be the last truck you ever jump on. Man, I, I don't I don't get it. it, and it I'm, I'm Look, Toe Jam, TiVo, I'm, I'm scratching my head on all this all, all this buffoonery, you know, you you got you you got bricks being placed at at places like, yo, we're supposed to be down here on some peaceful shit, and somebody just put a brick, uh, like bricks there, and it's like, that, now don't get me wrong, y'all, and no 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 disrespect and no shots fired to my to my white subscribers or you know my white viewers and all like that, but. I'm not feeling what I'm seeing, man. You know, uh, a white person take a brick and then just start tossing it and start tearing up shit because that's what I see on the video. I see white people initiating the shit, and it's just unfortunate that we 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 got we we got people we got minorities followers. You know what I'm saying? Not well, not leaders in that situation. Not lead. Now they following. They somebody somebody throw a brick in Macy's, and now we got followers that goes up in there and and make it look bad. And then when the media comes out, we we only see us. You know what I'm saying? We they wasn't there when when the white person or the white you know white person that's covered up. In mass, like Chivo says, in mass, you know, initiating the shit. You know, they wasn't they wasn't there, you know, where the white woman was writing black uh BLM or Black Lives Matter on a Starbucks. You know, just like the girl said in the in the video, yo, we didn't ask you to do that. <laughs> you know, but when the media comes out, <laughs> when the media comes out, the media going to say, oh, black lives matter. So that means a black person might have did that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I do put some of the blame on the media, too. man. Go ahead, Toe Jam. What you was about to say? Oh, 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The media. But, you know, it, it's just that these people are doing all this damage. And, and man, I'd start whipping Antifa's ass. I, I, for the record, there was no Trump supporters in any of those riots. No. Because they'd have probably been killed. No. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Toe Jam. You, you was about to say something. No, I would just I would just encourage everybody to follow the money. You know, who benefits from this not being successful? Hmm. Who benefits from this becoming a race war? Hmm. Follow follow that money. Hmm. Um we got to do better. We yeah, got to do we, a lot we, better. We got to do a lot. We got to do a lot better, but man. We we do. We got would, we gotta come together and I, do something. You know, because this ain't right. I would, this I would give you this. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> think, think about this. We've been stuck in our houses for the last, not drivers, but our families, our loved ones, our friends. They've been stuck in their house for the last two and three and a half months. months. Yeah, two and a half, three months. Yep, yep, yep. Some people can't work from home. Mm -mm. During that time, as men, we can't provide for our families. As women, they can't provide for their families. The ones that got money coming in, where are they going to go? You know, <laughs> to go, the, the shelves are empty. You know, y'all remember trying to get toilet paper during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and the fights and the fights that was all over YouTube and social media that that attested to that. You know what I'm saying? This, Read. I, 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 I didn't see no riots or people breaking into breaking into Targets or Macy's or or Los Angeles for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, but they they can they can afford to be nice at that time. <laughs> Who's to say that this all hasn't been orchestrated? This is not mm. all a man. You know. See, that's what I like about this man. That's what I like about this man. Manufacture. They have created, someone has created a perfect storm. People can't wait to get out. You had them boys up in Michigan going up to the state house armed, saying, we coming outside whether you like it or not. Mm. Told the governor, basically said, fuck you and your uh, uh, Stay at home orders. orders. <laughs> Man, look. Who's to say that this hasn't been co-opted? We haven't been co-opted. Who's mm. to say that we're not being strung along like puppets on a string? Mm. Who's to say this that? This has been the perfect storm. What? It, what it, okay, so I know we haven't touched on this, and, we, and I'm about to, man. I'm a truck driver, so... Right off the rip, I, I'm for all truck drivers. I'm for all of us to protect ourselves. I mean, just like I said before, you know, police is not wired right. You know, they, they only objective is to make it home safe, to get back to their family. Well, truck driver is the same way. You know, we, you know, we, we got to duck, dodge, and weave and all like that with traffic and 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 shippers, receivers, and and regulations, and all that shit. All we just want to do is get home safe. Now, uh, now we got to worry about people jumping on our truck. We got to worry about people breaking into our truck. We got to worry about people coming in and 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 swarming us. I'm going to touch on the tanker driver that 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 they 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 you know grabbed out of the truck over there on I-35. Yes, situation was kind of tragic, but that was a young driver and he didn't know. And it takes two football fields to stop a truck. It wasn't like he was like bailing through there on purpose. He just didn't know. Imagine his thought going. I mean, coming up on that like everything was clear. And then all of a sudden, you see a gang of people like, oh, shit, I got to stop. So he's slamming on the brakes and boom. Now, I know some people in my comment section, some of my subscribers, some of my viewers, you know, I got email asking me, yo, 
why did he just why did he just just kept going? I I I don't know. You know, I'd like I said, I'd have kept going. I kept going. Right. Right. I don't know. I, I don't know why he didn't kept going. But me, everybody was moving out the way anyway. Listen, I, I'm certified in that. When I say something, do I not do it? And I think uh, Dojam can vouch for me. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Right or wrong? Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> you, I, listen, I, I think they all need to be ran clean over. That that has made a statement. We're the only country that will facilitate buffoonery like that. If you do that in Brazil, Philippines, Russia, oh yeah, uh, China, they, yeah, they they would have been ran. Name, name another one. They will kill you on the spot. Oh, Saudi they, Arabia, they will kill you on the spot. No joke. They they would have ran. They well, they, they they truck speaking, drivers out there would have ran over. China, you remember China? They just recently killed that man publicly. And the people rose up and they killed that cop. They whooped his. Uh, they they whooped him to death, mm. literally. Yeah, but but in the Philippines they were protesting a few years ago. And the military went in there and ran them all over with three big ass trucks. Mm. I laughed it. I kind of laughed. Yeah, because, I mean, you know what? Don't be in the street. You want to protest? Protest on the sidewalk. But exactly. Once you're in the road and you're on my lane, I'm running over. Exactly. So yeah. like, you know, and if, you're, and if you're from Ohio. I'm taking Mori out. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, we we no, nah, we gonna stand there and stop that, right? So, uh, well, you know, like I said, I'm about to touch on the other two drivers, the the UPS driver and the unfortunate situation with the uh with the FedEx driver. I like I said, I had a comment, I had a comment in my uh in my post that says, "Nah, you don't deserve to be a truck driver if you would have did that, bro." I'm scared for my life. Somebody not somebody banging on my door with a with a gun because somebody mentioned gun, you know, in that video. Oh, they all got guns. I, of course, I'm gonna wail on my wail on my horn and and get the fuck up out of there. And then, unfortunately, you know, oh, I will on. see the unfortunate. Right there. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. To your to your point, what's the police say when they kill unarmed black people? Oh. He, was he was resisting arrest. He was resisting He was resisting, but I had the shooting, even though he was unarmed, because I feared for my life. Exactly. The, if the, the police can do it, how come truck drivers can't get that off? Exactly. And then, and and then, sorry again, sorry again, the 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 rewind, sorry again, you know, because it's 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 points to be made here. If all those people that that rushed up to that UPS driver over here asking them, stop, 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 get out, back up, get out. If somebody stuck up under your truck again, this is my opinion. Why did the people that gathered around on George Floyd did not make it, did not sacrifice themselves for that? Debate me if I'm wrong, y'all. De debate me on no, this, you're Joe. Right, you're right. De they, debate they, me they on this, Joe. Uh, all four of those officers need to be charged, regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know if there's a reckless manslaughter, but every one of them was reckless. Exactly. Uh, you know, not you, your job's to defend the Constitution uh, overall and, and defend the public. And I think that these cops, a lot of them, not all of them, they, they, they defend corporations. When do they actually stand up for us? That's exactly why we have a Second Amendment, because mm -hmm. they're not there for us. But our mm -hmm. Second Amendment should never be subverted in any state. Exactly. But to protect us from the state. Exactly. Right. So, Toe, would, uh, Toe, what, 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 what you got to say on that, man? I, I, am I right or wrong? I, am I wrong for saying that? Uh, would you, would, uh, would you sacrifice for the for the greater good? Because I guarantee you, if somebody or two or three would have ran up on that little child guy, that little child cop, I'm sure Mister Knee Man would have got up and came over to help him out. And of course, no, you of, of course you would have got arrested. You would have got arrested for interfering with police business. But I would have been lucky if I got arrested. I probably would have been killed. Mm. Yeah, maybe not me, but you would. 
<laughs> no, that's real shit. That's real talk. Chavo. That's real talk. But, but no, my training tells me to no interference when I see something like that. Mm-hmm. I can only tell you in a calm manner. You know, I probably would have been excited during the time. But right. being calm and, you know, we just talking here, my training tells me that I need to throw interference. I need to do something just to make that officer get up. Okay. Yeah, it, still it, maybe not be a threat to him, but just to make him get up. Yeah. And that's all it would have took. If he'd have got off of his neck, we wouldn't be here. Exactly. Yeah. We would not we would not be here. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Let, let, let me go let ahead, me throw this out here. So with all the brutality and all this other shit, you know what? We have a national military for training and all this stuff we have all these different national things why not just have a national police training instead of all these billy bob doodab you know police forces now everybody go through a national training center that way you have cops from all over the united states from all different cultures backgrounds everybody works together instead of just having you know uh, a certain type of police force. Now, I'm I'm not a fan of Minneapolis. Not a fan of Nashville. Uh, I I think those cops are are weak at what they do, really. Okay. Um. Uh. And, and Florida Highway Patrol, they're they're really corrupt too. And and I know it for a fact, and I have proof. But nobody holds them accountable. Okay. So, anyway, uh, you know, all these people. You know, they they get through the cracks and they're they're doing all the dirt. I mean, there's so so many dirty cops that are doing stuff that you know is illegal for us, but okay for them. I mean, I know a guy that got a DUI, hit somebody, they let him off. A judge let him off. Somebody else does freaking drugs and pills. You know, cocaine and pills. I mean, come on, man. Oh you know, no, cop- no, that that no. The, it's only a few bad apples. Few. There's a lot. There's, there's a, a lot. There's a lot. But there, there's a lot. You know, like there's, I said, there's, there, there's some there's good police. There, there's some good police, and then you got your, yeah, you not, know, you got your bad police. Patrol. That that whole that whole division's corrupt, and uh, they sit there. Good people, exactly. That wear the badge, but you can't be good while you got the badge on because the whole system of policing is oppressive in its nature. Right. Well, let, let me play devil's advocate for a little bit, you know. That's what, what that's that's what got me not talking to you. Let, let me play de- let me play devil's advocate for a little bit, man. Because like I said, I, I got some <laughs> cop friends and all like that. I, I got some cop friends, man, and I, I and like I said before, they 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 not wired. They they really isn't. You know what I'm saying? The the thing that's on their mind is to get home to their families. You know what I'm saying? But what if they encounter, uh, 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 and there's videos of that too, what if they encounter, you know, people that's that's unruly? Like, you know, I asked, you know, the cop asked the young man, like, yo, you know, I just need your driver's license and your proof of insurance. But then you got, you, you got, you know, whether he's black or white or something like that, just going off at the cop, like, you know, why you do this? Why you pulling me over? Yada, yada, yada. And just agitating the cop, man. You know what I'm saying? So what what do you guys suggest the cops do in a situation where where the 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 person turns volatile? I mean, what can they what can they do in a situation like that? Because that's gonna be the question that's gonna need to be answered now in in the light of all of this. You know what I'm saying? No, Obviously no, that that's that doesn't change. Mm-hmm. That's when the training kicks in. That's when the self-defense training kicks in. That's when you, you know, that's why you got those weapons for those situations. But that's not what we're talking about. We were talking about when you use your training unnecessarily. Okay. That brother was handcuffed. He had two people on him. Yeah. Out of the vision of the camera. And right. And you had the one guy on his neck. I I I got, hey, hey, I got you, Toe Jam. I, I'm with you on that. They they already had him subdued, and it wasn't you know probably one of them. One of them, one of them should have stood up and said, "Hey, why don't we get this man in the car 
because, you know, it's getting a little, you know, the crowd is getting a little antsy. Why don't we hurry up and get them in the car? None of them did that. Hey, That's what makes them complicit. Did, did you guys see that video of that FBI agent who got put in the car and they confirmed he was an FBI agent? And then why the question who confirmed it? Did you guys see that video? That no. was in Florida, too. Uh, I seen. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if I seen that one, but I seen another video. Oh my god, you haven't seen that? You I, guys need to see that. I'll, I'll oh go in god. and check it out. That's but crazy. the one, the one I seen is when the black guy, well, with the two cops came up to the, to the black F, FBI agent. Uh, I think he was like Syria or oh, something I like that. that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they call wearing a red shirt. Yeah, yeah, that one. I seen that one, and the dude, and and the dude told them like, "Yo, you got the wrong guy." <laughs> you got the wrong guy and then you know you see their faces drop when you know he found out that he was law enforcement like you know and, and no yeah. no 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 apologies no nothing just you know just just move yeah. on but yeah but i'm you that's know the, i, that's I understand the problem that that's exactly what i said there's no accountability for mm -hmm. them these cops can say and do whatever they want with a stroke of a pen without having any witnesses. For example, one time I got pulled over. Guy said I was doing 80 miles an hour. I just got on the highway. There was a BMW that passed me, and this guy pulled me and that cop over. I mean, uh, the, the BMW over. Mm -hmm. I said, what are you talking? Dude, I just got on the highway. He goes, I said, all right, show me the radar. He goes, I didn't get you by radar. Certified pace count. So later on, to make a long story short, I met a female who was a cop in that town that knew exactly who that officer was and said, oh, yeah, his nickname is two for one. He mm. goes out and makes shit up and does that. So even the police force knows that Florida Highway Patrol guy is crooked, but nobody does anything about it. Mm. No but accountability, man. None. Told Jam, I, I knew what you were saying, man. I, I got what you were saying, but I'm just saying, you know, for like, the, the the actual you know that the actual situation that a cop face every day you see what I'm saying that's that's oh, what yeah. I was talking well, that's about that's what the train is for yeah no I don't have any issue if a police if a if a police officer encounters a situation where he has to defend himself but I don't have any issue with that my issue is when you get a simple speeding ticket. And next thing you know, you got a dog sniffing on you, and then you got people going through your 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 vehicle. Your vehicle, exactly, exactly. And we you see know, that, and we give see. Give me my ticket and let me go. We see that every day on cops, uh, on live PD. You know, it, on we, I seventy one. On I seventy one. <laughs> I see the shit on, on I seventy one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's it's like a state. I mean, it's I love my state. No, I love my hold on, hold on. I love my state. I love my city. But man, that that that, that strip alone is like every other. It's not every other. It's every uh turnaround. There is a state trooper there. The fuck? Yeah. All that's true. All that enforcement, but none during DOT. All these piece of piece of shit freightliners running around in Ohio, and these dump trucks never pulling their damn curtain back. So we were replacing our windshield every year because all these rocks are going all over the place because mm -hmm. people don't have high standards. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh man! Yeah. Oh man! Oh man! Well, you, you can you can where the police needs to be, the police isn't. You know, they're so worried about showing the presence out there instead of taking care of some of these trucks out there. Like, hell, the one next to me, the fucking bumper's falling off. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Fuel leaking out from his fuel tank. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, just like, what in the heck, man? You know, but I got, it cost me money to fix my stuff, and this guy's probably the one moving the cheap freight because if he wasn't, you'd have fixed that shit already. Exactly. Well, exactly. Let, me ask, let me ask you, Chief. Is there anything about firearms in that letter that you wanted to submit to D.C.? Yeah. Uh, n no. No, there wasn't. Okay. Because, you know what, in my opinion, every other law that's against firearms is unconstitutional. So, until, you know, and he's never really pushed the 2A. Now, he did say that in that speech recently. He did say, everybody 2A. So, but, yeah. you know what, unless he signed an executive order, to, to to denounce all these states with their stupid rules, everybody should own a weapon. That keeps that a level playing field for everybody. 
Yeah. Well, what I, about any trucks? What about yeah? What about what about for us the truck drivers, man? Because we we honestly Absolutely. we really we really do we really, even though the company that we work for even prevents it, but we really do need something to protect us, man. I mean that 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 guy, you know, the FedEx driver, the UPS driver, and I, I'm just gonna say the tanker oh. driver. You know, they they was all out there unarmed. Don't tell anybody you're carrying then. Don't tell anybody you're carrying. Hide it. They're small enough weapons so you can buy. Almost like, almost like, take a deck of cards, stack them by double. That's how small it is. Plenty of places you can you can hide it, stash it, whatever. Mine, on the other hand, is a little bit bigger. Mine's almost the size of a boot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, to summarize, to summarize everything, I I, I want to first I want to thank both of y'all for coming on, man. This this some good conversation. We gonna we gonna have to definitely get back together again to do this. So I I do appreciate uh uh you Ch- Chavo Chavo. Chavo. TiVo. 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 Okay. Get myself a buzzer. <laughs> and uh, Ron told Jam, you know, get myself a ding for that because I got it right. Uh, I appreciate y'all two coming on. But in summary, man, to summarize everything, everything that's going on out here, man, in, in both of y'all opinions, what, what, uh, what, what kind of advice that you can give some of these young truckers out here? You know what I'm saying? Because we, you know, we are. Our livelihood is 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 kind of at stake as some of these, you know, as as some of the situations that's going on. So, what do you guys say to young drivers uh, that's coming out uh, to protect themselves and to and to do right? Uh, have your CD on, dress like a professional. I understand if you're in a truck stop, but when you're going to shippers, dress like dress like a, a professional, not like you're going to the beach. Um, you, you need to learn English and trucking. If there's an emergency, you got to be able to communicate that emergency no matter what. Somebody's having a heart attack. Somebody's, you know, on fire, truck's on fire. That stuff happens out here. It does. Uh, also, um, communicate with drivers and get out and look. When you're backing out, get out and look. When you start going to the very back of the trailer, look at the angle you're at and figure out how to get yourself in that hole. Mm-hmm. People oversteer when I watch them back up all the time. It's like, what are you doing, man? You guys have no idea how to back up. And I got a spread axle flatbed. That's even harder to get in holes just because mm-hmm. you're, the tires are fighting against each other and they're spread out. So it, a lot of it is lack of training because these companies are just trying to push people into trucks, push people into trucks and, and get those uh, tax credits. All right. All right. Uh, Ryan, uh, what, what, you know, just, what, what, what advice you got out here and also in 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 uh in party man let let people know what sovereign rose is about yeah uh my advice to any driver not just the young ones but any driver is when you're out here the game is in trouble mobilize organize um if you're not a part of any type of trucking organization you're part of the problem. Organize, Agreed. mobilize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lastly, stop using this game as a quick, rich, quick, uh, quick, get quick, get rich, quick scheme. Excuse quick, me. get a rich, hustle. quick a hustle. scheme. It's not a hustle. Chucky's not a hustle. It's a lifestyle. It's not a hustle. It's a lifestyle. They said it is. You, you guys said it is. There you go. You keep taking out of the game. But you're not contributing. You're not putting nothing forth. You're not putting nothing into the game. Eventually, it won't be nothing here for you or for your family or for your descendants. And there was somebody who came before you that made sure that there was a place for you to be here. Exactly. Let them know That's what. All I got. Let let them know. Oh, no, no, it ain't bro. No, it ain't bro. Let let them know what uh several. Let them know what Sovereign Rose about, man. Let them know your little uh, your organization, your your organize, your organ, your organization, organ. Damn it, man! Go go ahead and tell them what Sovereign Rose about, bro. <laughs> Sovereign Rose is just as you, as you as you hear it. We trying to get free out here on these roads. It's a organ. It's a driver advocacy organization. You're more than welcome to 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 join up. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Zello. 
um, let's get engaged because we only as powerful as we are united. We're more powerful united than we are by us individuals. All right, all right, all right. Well, my man, my man, we we had we had some good talks today, man. We had some good talks today, my man. Uh, Ryan Stinson, Toe Jam. I still don't know where, where why they call him Toe Jam. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad he on. My man Tivo, Tivo, right? Tivo. I don't need to give myself a buzzer. Yeah. All right, there we go. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate you both gentlemen coming on and uh, chopping it up with me on the on the podcast today, man. If you guys want to get in on the action, y'all know what to do. Y'all know what to do. Just hit me up in the pod, uh, in the Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or hit me up in the DM over at Instagram. That's it. Instagram. And you can also text me, 216 uh six zero zero two zero nine zero that's what you can do man i mean look we we need to come together we really do we need to come together this all this need to stop you know the brokers the looters the the everything everything we, we need to come we need to come together we need to get it right people we need to get it right man we need to get it right Yo, I am your humble host. Oh, wait, before I before anything, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and yo, um, what else? What else? Hit that like, hit hit the god damn it. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that all button when you hit the subscribe button. Alright? So for my guy, uh Tivo, myself, lockout man, and Tote Jam. We are gone.